studio of Fiber for the People yarn. My name is Taylor and this is round two of the Color Fest Sock Set Club for Fiber for the People vlog series where I share with you my journey and coming up with the various different colorways that are going to be sent out to the members of the Sock Set Club. Um, I'm really super looking forward to today's uh, colorway because this particular festival that we're chronicling today is oh gosh, so um, it's very colorful, but it's just got such a really interesting kind of um, combination of colors going on, so I'm super excited about that. But if this is the first time that you've seen these vlog series, just so you know, you don't have to watch these in order, but there is a round one that came out last month about the celebration Holly, um, so you can check that one out if you missed that. I'll go ahead and link to it here um, so you can see it here. But if not, you can just go ahead and watch this one and go back and watch that one later. There's no order to this at all. Um, but also, too, just know that the Color Fest Sock Set Club is closed at this point. This is just a vlog series uh, where I share with you how I come up with, um, or kind of like my, my creative process for determining what I'm going to do for the colorways. So that's what this is. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and, and jump right into it and talk about how we're going to uh, design the Inti Rimey Peruvian Sun Festival colorway. Okay, so Inti Raimi is a festival celebrated in Peru, and it is actually um, a festival that was celebrated and is still celebrated in regions of the Inca Empire. Um, so we're talking, you know, the ancient history, you know, Incan Empire all the way up until now, those regions celebrate um, Inti Raimi, and it's a celebration of Inti, who is the Incan sun god, and it was to celebrate the coming of the winter solstice. This particular celebration is celebrated on June 24th, so it's actually a um, winter festival for the people in Peru and in that region of the world in South America. Um, you know, it's summer here, but it is a winter time festival. The winter solstice is what's being celebrated here. Um, and you would hope it's winter, because when you see the things that these people wear during these celebrations, it's um, it's pretty intense. It would be very hot if it were summer. But 
I'm really excited about this because I love um, the colors that are happening. Now in Holly, if you uh, watched the previous vlog, you remember that that colorway um, contained a lot of pink because that was the predominant color that you see in the photo that I chose as inspiration. And I love pink, I love me some good pink. But I'm just, I'm interested in coming up with this colorway just because of the visual interest of the photo that I'm gonna show you that um, depicts uh, Inti Raimi. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you the photo and then we're gonna talk a little bit about where we can pull inspiration from this photo. Okay, so here is the photo for um, Inti Raimi and I'm gonna try and kind of like speak around the photo so you can still hear me. Um, I am just so inspired by what's going on in this photo for a few reasons. I'm kind of making it like bending it so the light doesn't uh, blow it out but there's such like amazing costumes that they're wearing. I mean these masks are incredible so each person in the this particular portion of the celebration is wearing these red masks. I mean, there's a little boy or a little girl over here who's wearing a red mask. Everybody has a red mask on. And what's also interesting about it is it looks to me like each mask has different eyes. Like the eyes aren't all exactly the same. Like this person back here has like blue eyes and this has like a gray ring around the eye. I don't know, it's just really cool, the variation in the costumes. Um, lots of great colors happening here. I mean, you have the really beautiful like primary colors standing out, the greens, the oranges, the yellows, the blues, the light blues, all of that, the ra real true rainbow colors definitely stick out. But something that, I don't know if you can see it here, so I'm gonna pull in a little closer. There's this beautiful like mahogany maroon color that's happening right here. There's lots of really pretty gold going on. You can see that in here. There's obviously gold happening back here. Um, than these jewel tones that are embellishing these headpieces. Oh, you know, it's just, it's really beautiful. Now, the first place that I was drawing inspiration from this was this mask. I thought, what a beautiful colorway if I were just to focus on the mask and draw inspiration just from the mask with a really pretty red, kind of almost like a blushing red base with some gold details, some black in there. Um, and then I decided like I wanted to pull inspiration from more than just that. I mean, there's so much beauty going on in this photo, so much color, so much vibrance that I want to pull inspiration from more than just that mask. So I was thinking um, I definitely need to figure out like how, okay, obvious color inspiration happening here are these tassels that you see here and down here. We need to pull color from, from that somehow, absolutely. The gold, the gold stands out to me, like ugh, it's beautiful. And then of course that maroon. So I feel like I want to um, go in that direction with the colorways. I'm definitely, yeah, I'm definitely pulling, you know, wanting to pull inspiration from this maroon color that's happening here, these tassels that are going on right over here, all this gold and these other jewel tones that look like sequins that have been sewn onto these um, capes almost. These look kind of like capes. Uh, just oh, so much inspiration here. But what sticks out to me most is the maroon, the gold, and then these tassels. And because these little jewel tones are kind of glitter, like glittered all over, is that a word? Glittered? All over the different uh, dresses that they're wearing or the different um, outfits that they're wearing, that could definitely be in the form of a speckle on the yarn. So I'm just gonna go ahead and jot down some of my initial kind of uh, inspira sources of inspiration. All right, so I'm definitely thinking some kind of a maroon base. Maybe when I say maroon, almost like a mahogany. Then I wanna pull in maybe even like maroon base on half and then maybe like a gold on half. A really cool like micro striping effect can be going on there. And then jewel tones, a speckles. I mean, I definitely want to pull some black into that somehow. I think it's a really good idea to try. <laughs> Whenever you see, I mean, black is an amazing way of providing contrast. Um, in photography, black is there to, to kind of, whenever you up your contrast when editing photos, what all that's doing is the photo is um, showing more black space. It's adding, you know, lines of black in between each of the different pixels to create more of a contrast. And so I kind of think about that when I'm speckling. So finding a way uh, to add black for contrast. 
that'd be really cool. Okay, so I'm thinking that I want to I want to do something like this and maybe focus on kind of creating a micro stripe type skein of yarn. So let's go ahead and go with that. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm definitely thinking I want to pull some maroon, some mahogany, get some jewel tones pulled out. Uh, my gold, I have a go-to gold color that I like to use. Um, it's actually kind of like a mix of a few different colors that I have and it makes a really nice um, gold that I think is very, it's just very, it's just the perfect gold. I love gold. And then when it comes to the mini skeins, I am going to wait and see how the main colorway comes out. I have an idea of what I want to do for the mini skeins, but I'm going to wait and see how um, this main colorway comes, and then we'll start chatting about inspiration for the mini skeins. But let's go ahead and uh, get right down to it. stick is because this is my kind of way of standardizing the water measurements that are in my pans. Instead of measuring it out with a measuring cup, which could take a long time to fill, you know, pans this size, I like to just do it based on um, the height of the water in the pan or the depth of the water, I guess you could say. So that's kind of what the meter stick is used for. It's just a standard, uh, standardized form of measuring like, depth of water in my pan. Mm -hmm. 